So the astrodynamics group in Tobergata is um, very uh, happy to introduce uh, Professor Katalin Ganesh from the University of Yashi, and uh, he will talk about analysis of main resonances in the space that we Thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank to Alexander for her helping me in many problems and many situations and for inviting me to many, many conferences. To Alexander for his uh, continuous uh, encouragement and for, also for uh, Hugo for giving the opportunity to make many tests on Master Um The overview of my talk is the following. Um, after uh, an introduction, I will present the uh, equation of motion in Cartesian coordinates, including the uh, main uh, perturbations. Then uh, I will switch to the Hamiltonian formulation, and uh, we will see there the geopotential and the resonances. In particular, we will refer to the one to one and two to one resonances. And uh, <coughs> you, we present the uh, resonant part and the secular part of the geopotential and uh, we analyze the dominant ends which are uh, uh, presented in the resonant part. Then uh, we will give a, a measure of the amplitude of the resonant islands and uh, finally we present some uh, cartographic cartographic results for the one-to-one -one resonance and two-to-one resonance and uh, some uh, conclusion and per 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 perspectives. Um, following the two-line element catalog, there are uh, more than 60,000 objects, larger than, than uh, 10 centimeters orbiting around the Earth. And, uh, just 6% of them are uh, operative satellites, the rest of them are uh, debris. The number uh, of objects increases exponentially if we count uh, smaller fragments down to one centimeter, we have this number of objects and uh, this estimate. And uh, if we count uh, even smaller objects, then we have uh, this number, this estimate. In fact, the spatial density of objects uh, as a function of altitude can be seen in this plot. Where, uh, we, dis where we distinguish uh, three important regions, Leo region, Le uh, low Earth orbits, between zero, the altitude between zero and 2,000 kilometers, kilometers. Then we have the Mero region, medium Earth orbits, up to 30,000 kilometers on the uh, surface of the Earth and uh, the geo geostationary uh, orbits. Um, here is an uh, artistic uh, uh, picture related uh, uh, concerning the space debris. Here uh, the growth of, of the number of objects in space. You can see that uh, there is a uh, the total object in space is a linear increase up to uh, late of 90s. Then uh, uh, the astronomy the community uh, imposed uh, some uh, rules in, uh, for the exploration of space, and uh, the uh, rate of growth reduced in this. Uh, during this time, but then uh, there was two catat catastrophic events, Fengyan, and uh, then uh, two satellites collide and uh, uh, more than 5,000 uh, space debris uh, were produced by these uh, events. Uh, from a dynamical point of view, each region, Leo, Meo, and Geo, the regions uh, raises uh, his uh, uh, its uh, specific deep problems. If uh, in uh, the Leo region uh, the atmospheric drag causes the object to decay in the atmosphere, in uh, space debris in the Meo or uh, Geo region remain almost uh, forever in that region. So understanding the overall 
uh, orbital evolution of satellites and space debris is essential for uh, maintenance and control strategies as well for uh, the space debris mitigation. There are possible uh, two kind of uh, strategies for the disposal orbits. If we uh, first of all we can uh, look uh, for uh, stability regions to minimize uh, eccentricity growth and future interaction with the operational spacecraft in the region, or seeking stability to attenuate the collision risk and aim to re-enter into the atmosphere. And a large number of works are dedicated to study the dynamic of satellites, and uh, here are some books in uh, this uh, direction. Uh, resonance effects on uh, MEO and GEO orbits, uh, including uh, various uh, influences like uh, lunar solar perturbation, solar radiation pressure, shadow, 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 uh, shadowing effects, have been investigated in uh, many um, papers. And here are some of them. Um, the aim of, the, aim of this talk is to present a description of the dynamics of space degree in one to one and two to one resonances. And this analysis includes an explanation of the main dynamical feature of each resonance, obtained by uh, computing the leading terms of the expansion in uh, specific uh, resonance regions. Then uh, we perform a cartographic study of the 1 to 1 to and 2 to 1 resonances by using the fast accumulative indicator. We provide the determination of the location of the equilibrium points and the amplitudes of the vibration island for each resonance. And uh, finally, we will try to describe the role of uh, the zonal harmonics, the tensional harmonics, high on order, zonal harmonics, tensional harmonics, and uh, their interaction in the long term predictability of uh, MEO and uh, GEO uh, orbits. So uh, let's uh, see first the equation of motion in Cartesian coordinates and the main uh, forces. Well, we refer the motion of uh, space debris to a um, quasi-inertial reference system with the x-axis pointing to the vernal equinox and the x-y uh, plane to be the equatorial plane. We also consider a synodic referen reference system with the capital X axis in the Greenwich meridian and the x-y uh, plane to be the XY plane to be the, the same the equatorial plane. Uh, this uh, synodic system rotates with the Earth, so clearly this angle is the sideral time. Theta denoted by theta, the sideral time. In the synodic frame, we will use a um, spherical uh, system coordinates, lambda is the uh, longitude and uh, phi is latitude. Uh, the capillary motion of the space degree is uh, perturbed by the oblateness of the Earth, rotation of the Earth, Sun, Moon, and other uh, non -gravitational, gravitational forces like solar radiation pressure, or if the body is in, in Leo region by uh, atmospheric drag. Uh, the motion is described by this uh, vectorial equation where uh, V represents the Earth's gravity potential. Here we have the contribution due to the Sun, to the Moon, and the other uh, contributions. And uh, in terms of uh, the spherical harmonics, the potential, the geopotential, can be uh, wrote in this uh, form where well, uh, PMM represents the associated uh, uh, <coughs> uh, Legendre polynomials. Uh, CMS are the uh, coefficients of the spherical harmonics, cos cosine and sine uh, coefficients. And uh, Air represents the radius of the Earth. Now, uh, we 
will, uh, you know, will uh, call n, n is the uh, degree of uh, the harmonic, and m is the order of the harmonic. Uh, if m is zero, we will speak about uh, zona harmonics, and uh, if uh, m is different, if the focus light is different from zero, we will speak about the tesseral harmonics. Now, uh, if uh, we are interested in uh, in uh, computing uh, a precise orbit, we have to take into account, depends on where the body is, where the inner body is located, we have to com uh, compute uh, to retain in the development a large number of uh, uh, harmonics, let's say up to 10, uh, up to 20, and uh, degree 10 or 20, depends on the location of the of the space degree, but if we are interested in the, in, in the dynamics, we will want to know in which regime is uh, that body, we are, uh, we can uh, take just a small number of harmonics and uh, we will see later that it is enough for, for both one to one and two to one resonance to catch the main uh, uh, dynamical feature of each resonance to take uh, the degree equal to three. Uh, <coughs> we computed uh, this term, which appeared in the equation of in the equatorial equation of motion, and uh, we obtained the equations in. Uh, uh, reference system, reference frame, and uh, retaining just uh, the harmonics up to degree 2, we have uh, this system. Uh, please note that uh, the sideral time, theta, it's pre is included just in the terms which are associated to tesseral harmonics, and that's why uh, this kind of uh, resonances are called, uh, in some papers, uh, tesseral uh, resonances. Uh, for later convenience, instead of uh, using cosine and sine uh, uh, coefficients, we will use uh, j, j and m, and uh, uh, this angle, lambda, and uh, using the Earth gravitational model 2008, we computed the um, these coefficients up to degree and order 4. So for the Cartesian, we will use the Cartesian equations just to uh, validate our results which will be uh, obtained mainly by using the Hamiltonian formulation. We, uh, we can see that the uh, biggest uh, number is here, J2, is uh, the most important uh, uh, perturbation term. Other forces, uh, solar radiation pressure effect, and uh, we will use uh, this uh, formula where uh, the most important factor is uh, area to mass ratio. And uh, here we plot the uh, order of magnitude of various perturbations of a satellite of space or space degree. GM stands for uh, the monopole term of the gravitational attraction. J2, J22, and so on are the uh, acceleration induced by the blackness of the Earth, various terms. Influence of the moon, sun, and uh, solar radiation pressure here with uh, different uh, different uh, parameters, different values. Uh, if uh, we are interested in the one-to-one -one and two-to-one resonances, we we'll see to explain uh, what's happening in these zones and. Uh, Please note that uh, the most important perturbations are J2, Moon, the Sun, but, uh, and uh, the tesseral uh, harmonics play uh, these uh, most uh, uh, not 
Well, that's the name of our drone. But uh, if we, in general, but if we are looking to the one-to-one -one and two-to-one -one resonances due to the small divisors, uh, the effect of J2 and of the tessaral hormones increase uh, exponentially, let's say. Uh, and then we are, uh, our study is confined to uh, analysis of these resonances and the uh, uh, effect produced by uh, the interaction of, between the tessaral harmonics. And we will see that in the case of 2 to 1 resonance, uh, a great role is played also by J2. We numerically integrated the above of, uh, system of equations re referred by uh, this relation. And we computed then the fast Lyapunov indicator. Uh, we used uh, a multi step numerical me method, uh, predictor corrector method. And uh, we will see the uh, results a little bit later. Now let's switch to the Hamiltonian formulation and to see the geopotential and the resonances. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm going to recall the orbital elements of uh, space debris. So we have the semi major axis and the eccentricity of the eclipse. Then uh, some angles, the inclination, the longitude of the ascending node, and the argument of perigee. And also, we will use instead of true anomaly, the mean anomaly. Uh, in terms of the Delaunay variables, which are related to the orbital elements by uh, these uh, three relations, the Hamiltonian can be written in this form, where uh, here we have the two-body contribution the, and some uh, perturbation functions due to the Earth, or blackness of the Earth, due to the Moon, Sun, and solar radiation pressure. Uh, we will focus uh, here on the disturbing function due to the Earth, and uh, we neglect for the moment uh, the effects produced by the other disturbing functions. Clearly, the canonical equations can be written in this form. Uh, for the disturbing function due to the Earth, we can use, uh, for example, the Kaula or Keo uh, book, books, and uh, we found uh, this uh, uh, expansion, where f and j are the inclination functions and uh, eccentricity functions. And s uh, has this form, where j and m, we saw earlier. And uh, c is uh, the argument of the harmonics. Clearly, uh, this uh, expansion contains an infinite number of terms and uh, can be uh, grouped in uh, uh, secular terms, which are independent of, independent of the mean anomaly. Then we have uh, resonant terms and short periodic terms. And clearly, the long term uh, variation of the orbital elements is uh, due to the secular term secular part and the, uh, and the resonant part. But uh, let's see first what we understand by uh, uh, resonance. Uh, a gravitational resonance uh, occurs uh, when uh, there is a compatibility between the period of the orbit, uh, between the period of, period of the uh, object, orbital period of the object and the uh, uh, period of the Earth rotation. Mainly, we have, we have a relation of this form, where uh, theta dot is the angular speed of the Earth. Using the Kepler term, Kepler's third law, we can compute the location of uh, resonances, and with the red, here we have the main resonances, one to one and two to one resonances. However, ho however, since uh, Omega dot and uh, uh, small omega and uh, big omega dot are, uh, are not zero, and we will see that uh, the main effect, this is due to the, the effect of J2. Each 
initial resonance splits into a multiple of resonances. And the, in the case of 2 to 1 resonance, uh, this uh, become, became important. The exact location of resonance for each component of the multiplet is obtained by this uh, exact relation. Uh, we computed the secular part and the resonant part for the uh, disturbing function due to the earth, and uh, we considered the degree, uh, considered terms out to degree and te order n equal to 4. Uh, up to second order in, in eccentricity, the resonant part, the secular part, is expressed by this uh, formula. In the case of one-to-one -one resonance, we introduce the so-called so -called stroboscopic mean law, mean null law, and uh, up to second order in eccentricity, we consider we uh, obtain it the resonant part of uh, one of the one-to-one -one resonance. Uh, in fact, we get uh, 20 terms, and here are uh, written just three of them. And uh, since uh, we have to compare this term, we introduce this uh, definition. Uh, we will say that uh, a specific term in the expansion is uh, dominant in a given region of the phase space, let's say the first one, if uh, its magnitude it's uh, larger, it's greater than the magnitude of uh, any, any, other or any other term in, uh, in that region of the phase space. <coughs> and uh, here we have a plot representing dominant terms with black in the, that region. Uh, with black we have the first term, with uh, brown the second term, and with yellow is the third uh, term, and uh, we will see. We can see here that uh, the first one, the first term, is dominant in almost all region of the phase space. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, moreover, we can say that it is not uh, dominant just in in the sense of our definition, but. Uh, uh, the magnitude is, is much larger than the magnitude of any other, other term, at least for uh, smaller for smaller eccentricities. So, uh, anticipating the results, which will be presented in a moment, um, will be due, in essence, by uh, the influence of this term, of the dominant term. That's why the uh, equilibrium point, the elliptic point, is located at uh, lambda equal to lambda 2 2, which is uh, 75, about 75 degrees. And for uh, almost, uh, inclin value, almost values of inclination and eccentricity. Uh, on contrary, in the case of uh, two to one resonance, uh, we have three important terms, and uh, here is the dominant term in, in the, the case of two to one resonance. With yellow, we have uh, the third term. With brown, this term, and uh, with black, the first term of uh, the expansion. And uh, we see that, uh, in contrast with the uh, one-to-one resonance, there is a balance between these uh, three terms. And moreover, <coughs> uh, if uh, one, we can say that if uh, one of these three terms dominate in a, a given region of the phase space, this means that uh, uh, <coughs> this, this do not mean that. Uh, his magnitude is larger than the magnitude of any other, any other, other term of the expansion. Uh, there are some regions, like this one, this one region, in which the magnitude of all three terms are uh, comparable. 
so uh, the dynamics will be uh, we will see later uh, it's um, it's much more complex than in the case of one-to-one -one resonance. <coughs> Uh, now, using uh, these expansions, we can uh, give an estimate of the amplitude of the resonance islands for, uh, as a function of eccentricity and inclination. And uh, in this respect, we recall first that uh, in the case of the over pendulum, which is characterized by uh, this Hamiltonian, the half width or half, um, the half width of the liberation region is um, expressed by this formula. And here is an, an example in which, you in which we computed the uh, amplitude of uh, uh, the liberation region in the case when beta is equal to 5 and c is equal to 0 0.05. So we obtain it for the half width of the vibration region, 0.2. So the uh, amplitude is 0.4. Using this uh, very simple argument, uh, we provide an elementary computation of, uh, in order to estimate the amplitude of the 1 to 1 and 2 to 1 resonances. Uh, the resonant Hamiltonian can be uh, written in this form. We have secular part and the resonant part, where here the, by R we denote it by uh, we denote the Fourier coefficients of the resonant part. And uh, recall that the G and H and H H uh, depend on eccentricity and inclination. Um, L is almost constant for uh, um, in the case of a given resonance and uh, if we expand the, this uh, this Hamiltonian around uh, this value the resonant value of L and uh, retaining in, uh, in the Hamiltonian just the largest term of the resonant part, after some computation and uh, canonical transformation, we arrive to, to this Hamiltonian, which is very similar to the uh, Hamiltonian obtained for the pendulum uh, case. Uh, using that result, we obtain the half width of the uh, resonant region, and uh, if we go back on the, uh, on the uh, and estimate the semi-measure axis, we obtain it uh, in the case of one-to-one -one resonance, uh, this plot, which represents the amplitude in kilometers, and uh, in the case of two-to-one -two resonance, we have uh, this plot, which is uh, different, much different from the case of one-to-one -one resonance. Uh, in the case of one-to-one -one resonance, uh, the amplitude is larger, once the eccentricity is small and the inclination is small, on contrary, in the case of two-to-one resonance. We have here two important uh, points for small inclinations. Uh, we will see later that we are dealing with a bifurcation point, uh, a transcritical bifurcation point for zero and uh, inclination equal to around 70 degrees. Uh, now let's see some uh, cartographic results. Uh, we proceed to analyze different uh, these uh, two resonances by using the FLI. And I'd like to recall that in the case of geospace degrees, some uh, results have been obtained in these papers by using the MEGLO indicator. Our study is uh, based on the Hamiltonian formulation. 
of the one to one and two to one resonances, but uh, we will provide the results uh, obtained also by using the Cartesian uh, approach. By using FLI, we provide information of the regular and chaotic character of the dynamics, the location of the equilibrium points, and the role of higher degree harmonics. Yeah. Here are some results obtained by using the Hamiltonian formulation for the one-to-one -one resonance. When the inclination is zero, uh, small omega is zero, and uh, uh, big omega is also zero. Uh, when the inclination, uh, when the eccentricity is small on the top uh, figure, and uh, inclination, inclination in eccentricity is large uh, on the bottom, uh, bottom figures. In the left, uh, we consider as uh, perturbations just J2 and J2 two terms. So we obtain perdurum uh, like plots, uh, the semi major axis and the stroboscopic mean node circulate or like or uh, uh, librate, librate or circulate, and these two uh, regions are uh, are uh, divided by the same separatrix. However, if we take into account uh, degree uh, higher degree harmonics of uh, degree three, for example, just of degree three. We will see that uh, around the separatrix we obtain some uh, uh, other curves, which uh, and uh, also the, uh, the resonance uh, looks different, uh, lose his symmetry. The part which is visible on the left can be viewed as a mirror reflection of the one seen on the right. And uh, this is uh, due, in a sense, by the inclusion of uh, J3, J3 car harmonics, by uh, harmonics of degree uh, 3. If uh, we increase, increase the eccentricity, then uh, the amplitude of the resonance uh, uh, decreases. And uh, here we have another other plots. What's happening if we consider harmonics of degree four? And uh, we will see that uh, there is not a, a big difference. So in essence, the dynamics in the case of one-to-one -one resonance, at least for uh, small uh, inclinations, are uh, due to harmonics up to degree and order three. And uh, we validate our results obtained by uh, using the Hamiltonian formulation with uh, some results obtained uh, integrating the, the Cartesian equations. Here on the top, we consider the influence of J2 and J22. Here uh, also J2, J22, and J3 half. And on the bottom, the influence of the sun, moon, and solar radiation pressure. And we will see that uh, uh, at, least, at least for small values of uh, area of mass, uh, the influence of uh, the sun, moon, and solar radiation pressure do not uh, uh, change the dynamics uh, uh, space to be in, uh, in, a, in an essential way. Uh, well, moreover, uh, since uh, in the case of one-to-one -one resonance, we have a, a dominant term, just one dominant term in almost all regions of the phase space, the elliptic point it, is uh, located at lambda equal to 70, around 75 degrees. And uh, if uh, we change the value of, initial value of uh, 
longitudinal mass uh, of uh, the argument of PLG or the uh, longitudinal of ascending node, we don't obtain uh, a big difference. And, uh, we obtain basically the same results. So, um, argument of PLG and uh, longitude of ascending node uh, has uh, a small influence on, on the location of the equilibrium points in the case of one-to-one -one resonance. In the case of two-to-one -one resonance, uh, the dynamics is uh, much more complex than, than the previous case. And uh, to see what's happening, let's uh, uh, consider first, uh, let's describe first a phenomenon which is called the superposition, we would call superposition of the tesseral resonances. And to explain what's happening, we, obtain, we consider first this uh, toy model in which uh, we retain the se uh, secular part, just J2 in the secular part, and the that three important terms, T1, T2, and T3. Please uh, notice that uh, T1 is proportional to eccentricity and uh, uh, with the eccentricity, also T2 is proportional to eccentricity, but also with the uh, square of the sine of the inclination. And for 3T, 3T, uh, T3, T3 is uh, proportional with uh, this, uh, uh, with 1 plus 2 uh, <coughs> times uh, eccentricity of the power of 2. More, moreover, uh, the argument of uh, these three harmonics are uh, sigma pl plus uh, omega uh, for the first one, sigma minus omega for the second one, and sigma for the third one. Where sigma is uh, it's, uh, two times uh, stroboscopic mean uh, node. Now, let's uh, recall the main effect of J2. If we set uh, T1 T2, T3 equal to 0 in, the, in this Hamiltonian. Uh, we will see, we will obtain the main influence of J2 and uh, following Kaula, uh, J2 provokes a secular regression of the orbital node and the precession of the PG. We have these uh, formulas. And uh, let us remark that if the inclination is, uh, has this value, 64, 63 degrees, or the critical inclination, then uh, this uh, uh, term vanishes, so omega is constant. We, have to, we speak about uh, frozen orbits. If, uh, if the inclination is different from this uh, value, then uh, omega dot is different from zero, so these angles will have zero derivatives at a different location. Uh, so the gravitational, uh, gravitational resonance splits into a triplet of resonances, the separation between uh, them being of order of few kilometers. It depends uh, on the eccentricity, because uh, we have uh, in these formulas uh, eccentricity also, and also the inclination. And, uh, to see what's happening, <coughs> let's consider for that uh, toy model uh, the influence of T1, J2, and T1. Uh, we obtain a pendulum like plot with uh, uh, the elliptic point located at uh, minus 30 degrees and uh, the uh, semi major axis at this uh, altitude this distance from the center of the Earth, exactly. But uh, if we take uh, the influence of other term, let's say J2 plus T2, then uh, we notice here a shift in semi major axis. And uh, of course, uh, the equilibrium point, uh, the uh, stable point is located at uh, another uh, value of sigma, or precisely 150. For uh, the model including J2 plus P3, 
uh, again, again we have uh, the center of the island at a different altitude. And uh, here is what's happening if we con consider all the all perturbations, J2, T1, plus T2, plus T3. Uh, we obtain a very complex dynamics uh, with uh, a complex interplay between the regular and uh, chaotic uh, uh, orbits. And uh, this is ha this happenings, uh, this computation has been done for eccentricity 0 0.1 and inclination 20 degrees. Here uh, is again the, the plot we saw in the previous slide. Here, what we obtain, we, if we take all harmonics up to degree and order 4, you see that it is not a big difference. So, in essentially, the dynamics inside the 2 to 1 resonance is uh, ruled by uh, the interaction of uh, J2 and these three terms. Here, uh, uh, on the top, we use the Hamiltonian formulation, and on the bottom, we use the Cartesian equations. And uh, notice here that uh, if we take uh, the influence of J2, J22, and J3 cards, so harmonics up to degree and order 3, we obtain uh, the same um, feature. If we consider, uh, in addition, the influence of the sun, moon, and solar radiation pressure, we see that. Uh, this uh, blue zone, which is visible in all, the pl all these plots, disappears. So, uh, uh, the influence of the sun, moon, and solar radiation pressure become important in the in, uh, in case of two to one resonance. Uh, well, so really speaking, in the case of two to one resonance, if one term one of these three terms, T1, T2, or T3, T dominates and in a, in a given region of the phase space, and uh, uh, <coughs> his magnitude is larger than, much larger than the magnitude of any other three, any terms, then uh, we obtain we obtain a pendulum-like plot. On contrary, if uh, at least two of them are comparable in magnitude. Then uh, we have uh, we, we obtain uh, complex dynamics. There is uh, an exception, and uh, this exception uh, is for inclination 63 degrees. Uh, in, for uh, the critical inclination, we obtain we obtain also for large values of uh, for uh, eccentricity 0 0.5. We we obtain a pendulum-like plot. Um, now, uh, I uh, wrote here uh, again uh, these three terms, and uh, I'd like to stress that uh, in the case if uh, T2 dominates and the other terms are uh, smaller in magnitude, then the stable point, stable point is located at minus 30 degrees minus uh, omega. omega. Uh, in the case of uh, J2 plus T2, the uh, stable point is located at 150 plus omega. And uh, if 3T dominates, then uh, uh, the equilibrium point, the stable, stable point, is located at 55 degrees. This happens if the inclination is between 0 and 70 degrees. Because uh, here, uh, if uh, we go, if the intensity is, if the inclination is larger than this value, then uh, uh, the function f, uh, which appear he appears here, uh, change the sign, and uh, for small eccentricities. Uh, we obtain a bifurcation point, a transcritical bifurcation point. For example, for inclination 50 degrees and small eccentricity, 
the, the uh, equilibrium point, the stable equilibrium point is located at 55 degrees, and here we have a plot in which the inclination is uh, 80 degrees. So uh, at 55 degrees we have the hyperbolic point. We have the uh, transcritical bifurcation phenomenon. Uh, for uh, inclination 70 degrees, but also for inclination zero, because uh, this function again changes the sign when inclination is zero. We consider here what's happening just for uh, uh, positive inclination, but uh, if we consider an extended uh, analysis, then uh, we will notice that uh, zero or e equal, equal to zero, we have another bifurcation point. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> uh, let's see what's happening for various uh, uh, for various inclinations and various eccentricities. And uh, we plot here. Uh, we'll start with uh, small eccentricities. Eccentricity is 0 uh, 0.01, and uh, we plot here the FLI uh, as a function of uh, inclination or and semi-major axis. And here the left plot is obtained for sigma equal to 55 degrees. So if we draw a vertical line, we and uh, we intersect this vertical line with the uh, path that, uh, with this feature is visible on the plot. We obtain two points, and we can measure uh, the amplitude of the the amplitude of the resonances of the resonance um, uh, from this intersection for every value of uh, inclination. Um, the left plot should be used uh, uh, for an uh, inclination between 0 and 70 degrees, and uh, the right plot should be uh, used for an uh, uh, inclination bigger than uh, 70 degrees. So, let, you notice here that uh, first the amplitude uh, of the resonance increase uh, up to 34 degrees, and uh, is described by the, the, the way in which uh, vary, uh, the amplitude variates uh, with eccentricity is described by, by this function f, which increase between 0 and 34 degrees, then decrease. At uh, 70 degrees change the sign, and uh, the function minus f increase again. So. First, in this region, the amplitude increase with its inclination, then decrease. We have here the bifurcation point, and uh, again the amplitude increase with the eccentricity increase. What's happening if uh, eccentricity is larger? Uh, let's say a moderate eccentricity, 0.1. Uh, between 0 and 20, the inclination 20, uh, the T1 is dominant, then uh, the third one is dominant, between 20 and, uh, let's say, 40 degrees, and uh, from 40 to 90 degrees, the, the second one is uh, dominant. But, but uh, because uh, uh, for a large for moderate, uh, large and moderate uh, eccentricities, uh, the that three terms are comparable in magnitude between, uh, let's say, z uh, uh, 10 degrees and uh, 60 degrees. We have uh, in, inside the resonance we have uh, complex interplay, with, uh, complex dynamics. Uh, And uh, a, regular, uh, a regular zone is visible here between 0 and 10 degrees, or uh, 
if the inclination is large from 60 degrees to 90 degrees. If uh, eccentricity is big, 0.5, it's clear that uh, the dynamics is much more complex. Uh, all, the, all these plots for the two to one resonance has been, have been obtained uh, by using the uh, initial conditions omega, the argument of PG0 and the uh, uh, longitude of ascending node, also zero. So the question is uh, what's happening if uh, uh, we change the initial values of uh, set of uh, argument of PDG and the longitude of ascending node. And uh, since uh, the, this, in a sense, the toy model uh, can rep reproduce, in a sense, the main, main dynamics in the case of 2 to 1 resonance. And uh, since uh, omega is not present in the in uh, omega is a cyclic uh, variable. Uh, it is clear that uh, the the pattern of resonance uh, uh, is not influenced by uh, uh, by the longitude of ascending. However, in the however, since T uh, one T two depend on on the argument of PDG, uh, it is clear that uh, the location of the equilibrium points and the pattern of the resonance is, uh, is, uh, is strongly affected by the uh, uh, argument of PDG. And uh, here uh, is a plot in which uh, we saw earlier for uh, eccentricity 0.1, inclination 20 degrees, and the argument of uh, PG0. So we obtain it this plot. But if we change just the argument of PG, let's say minus 85 degrees, so we obtain this uh, pattern for the resonance. So the location, the location and the uh, feature of resonance uh, is strongly affected by uh, uh, argument of perigee. So, uh, in essential, uh, we, uh, some conclusions, uh, we studied the 1 to 1 and 2 to 1 resonances, and uh, we presented some numerical uh, results. Uh, in the case of 2 to 1 resonance, we pointed out uh, two uh, phenomena, like uh, Superposition of uh, tesser, uh, of uh, tesseral harmonics and uh, bifurcation points. Uh, we used both the Cartesian equations of motion and the Hamiltonian formulation. Uh, and uh, in the future, we would like to we would like to investigate the effects of uh, moon, sun, and solar radiation pressure in case of. Uh, especially in the case of 2 to 1 resonance and uh, to investigate other resonances and uh, to implement an analytical tools and perturbation theory to evaluate the orbital lifetime. Thank you for uh, your attention. Cartesian equations, uh, it was enough to integrate for 30 years. 30 years. 30 years. Which time step? Uh, for uh, geo region, we used uh, 10 uh, minutes. And for neo, 2 minutes. Okay. In the case of uh, Hamiltonian equations, a uh, uh, much smaller number. Uh, 1,000, no, uh, 10,000 days, 10,000 days. No questions? So if not, let us thank the speaker again.